Hello, Bioneers in San Francisco and all around the world. My name is Enric Sala. I am a National Geographic Explorer in Residence. I used to be an academic. I used to be a professor at Scripps Institution of Oceanography in La Jolla, a little farther south from where you are. My job was to study the impacts of humans in the ocean, the impacts of fishing and global warming, and publish our results in scientific journals. But one day, I realized that all I was doing was writing the obituary of the ocean. In fact, we were rewriting the obituary of the ocean with more and more data, more and more precision. That day, I felt like a doctor who's telling you how you're going to die with excruciating detail, but not offering a cure. And that day, I decided to quit academia and work full-time on conservation. And I came here to the National Geographic Society in Washington, D.C., because I thought that we could combine skills and assets. Now, you use the assets that National Geographic is famous for, for 134 years. Exploration, research, education, communication, and together help to save vital places in the ocean. And I'm saying vital places in the ocean, but also the land, because that's one of the most important things that humanity must do. We all know that we are stretching the ability of the planet to provide for us. We are going to prevent a climate disaster, a humanitarian disaster, an ecological disaster, only if we act decisively now because we have transformed our planet beyond recognition. Three quarters of the inhabitable land has been altered by our grazing our livestock, industrial agriculture, cities, roads, ports. Today, 96% of the biomass of mammals on Earth is us and our domesticated livestock. Only 4% is everything else, from pandas to elephants to polar bears. In the ocean, more than half of it is threatened by industrial fishing. And we have lost 90% of the large fish in the ocean. Sharks, tuna, cod, groupers, billfish, in the last 100 years alone. We have transformed our planet. We are turning our planet into a homogeneous landscape where we and our domesticated livestock dominate. So what are the solutions? Now, everybody's thinking about climate, but not so many leaders are thinking about nature. They are equally important. They are two sides of the same coin. If we want to avoid a climate disaster, we need to do two things. The first, is to reduce our carbon emissions to almost zero. But that's not enough, because there is an excess carbon pollution in the air and in the ocean. A molecule of carbon dioxide can be in the atmosphere for a thousand years. So all of this excess carbon pollution in the atmosphere is going to continue warming it and continue warming our planet for centuries or millennia. So in addition to reducing our emissions to almost zero, and this can, we can do through improving efficiency and innovation in technology and also changes in our behavior. The other solution of removing all this excess carbon pollution from the atmosphere has to be done by the only technology available to us today that can do this at scale. This technology is trees, it's forests, wetlands, peatlands, mangroves, seagrass beds, salt marshes, healthy ocean ecosystems. Only nature, through the work of plants and microscopic organisms, bacteria, can absorb, capture, and store this excess carbon pollution. The problem is that we don't have enough nature left to, to help us with this. As I mentioned before, we have transformed our planet in an incredible way. Today, 
we don't have enough nature to continue providing for us. So what's the solution? The science is very clear. We need to preserve half of the planet, half Earth, in its natural state. If we want nature to help us avert this global disaster. How much nature left we have today? Well, only a quarter of the land is still in, in a state that can be qualified as intact or pristine. And less than that in the ocean is still in a state that is pristine. So we need to protect much more, we need to restore. We need 50% of the planet in its natural state. So we can start by 30%, protecting 30% of the planet at least by 2030. This is what 95 countries around the world, from the global south to the global north, have agreed to. This is what the countries of the world can agree to this year, 2022, in the UN Convention on Biological Diversity, to agree to protect at least 30% of the planet by 2030, also called 30 by 30. How are we going to do that? What are the costs? What are the benefits? Well, this is what the world needs, 30%. Unfortunately, today, less than 8% of the ocean is under some kind of protection. So we need to quadruple the ocean protection in less than a decade. On the land, we are doing a little better. About 17% is protected, so we need to double the protected areas on the land. We have enough science to know which are the areas that need to be protected so nature can give us more oxygen, more rain, protecting us from floods, from wildfires, to help us regulate the climate, to capture more of our carbon pollution from the atmosphere. We know where these areas are. And I mentioned rain created by forest. How is that? Well, think of the Amazon forest, the largest single tropical forest on the planet. The trees absorb water from the soil and thanks to the tropical heat, bring it all the way up to the leaves where it transpires like we sweat. That water vapor will go up in the atmosphere, become cold, create clouds, and when it is the right time, it will fall as rain again, watering the forest. And the cycle will go on and on and on. But for that, we need a critical mass of forest. If we lost 20% of the current Amazonian forest, there would not be enough of this evaporation to create that rain, and the forest would turn into a savanna with catastrophic consequences, not just for the people in South America, but for the entire world, because the Amazon is key to drive global major patterns. So we know that we need to act. We know which are the places that need to be protected. We know that we need at least 30% of the planet protected and many of our degraded lands restored by 2030. So by 2050, we can get to half of the planet in its natural state while we use the other half responsibly. Now, some will say this is not possible because we cannot afford to protect 30% of the planet. And we need to think of our economies. Well, let's think about this for a moment. The natural world provides services, benefits to humanity that are free, like oxygen, clean water, food pollination, and many other benefits. It's been estimated that these benefits that nature gives us for free every year are $125 trillion with a T, $125 trillion. That is more than the global GDP. And half of the world's GDP depends, strictly depends on having a healthy natural world. So without a natural world in a healthy state, there will be no humanity, there will be no society, there will be no economy. So the economy is subservient to the natural world and the natural world is not an externality of our economy. Also, we know that a world with 30% protection would 
produce an economic output greater than the business as usual. Because we know that every dollar invested, for example, here in the United States, we know that every dollar invested in our national parks produces $10 in economic output. The benefits outweigh the costs by a ratio of 10 to 1. There is no stock in the market that can produce those returns. There is also the issue of health. Humanity cannot be healthy without a healthy natural world. And the COVID-19 pandemic has been the loudest reminder of that. Notwithstanding the conspiracy theories, the COVID-19 virus originated in a bat in China. And for some mechanism that we still don't know, that virus jumped onto a human. We have seen this in the past. AIDS, the virus of AIDS came from chimpanzees in Central Africa. SARS, also from bats. Ebola and other uh, pandemics and epidemics that we have suffered in the past have come from animals. These are zoonotic diseases. And they come from animals because we encroach upon intact forests, intact ecosystems, and get close to animals that we wouldn't be otherwise. Or because we trade in wildlife as medicines, pets, or food, like happened in these markets in China. So the very first cause of the pandemic was wildlife trade or contact with wild species in, in a forest in, in China. It is the destruction of nature that is putting these viruses on our doorstep. We're seeing more and more of this, not only in Asia, but also in Africa and in the Americas. What is the value of wildlife trade? Well, a study estimated that trading well with wild animals around the world, which is mostly illegal trade, equals $25 billion. That may seem like a lot, but the cost of the pandemic have been already over $15 trillion. So protecting nature would be much cheaper than the cost of having to pay for the next pandemic. And how much does it cost to protect nature? How much would it cost to protect the 30% of the planet? Economic studies suggest protecting 30% of the planet would be only $140 billion. I'm saying only because $140 billion is only a fraction of the subsidies that the society pays for burning fossil fuels. So the money is there. We just use it to subsidize the industries and subsidize the activities that actually destroy our life support system. So no matter how we look at it, we need the wild. It is much simpler, smarter, and cheaper and economically more beneficial, also with benefits to human life, our own survival. It is so much more beneficial for all these reasons to protect nature, to get to 30% of the planet protected by 2030, than continue with the status quo. So pioneers and friends in San Francisco and around the world, all of you have influence at different scales. All of you can help us achieve that target of protection of a third of the planet. You can start on your backyard, on your neighborhood, your city, your country. Depending on where you are, you can affect not only the restoration and protection of a piece of nature, but also increasing the benefits that this nature provides to all of us. So, I wish you good luck with the rest of the conference. I wish I could be there in San Francisco with uh, those of you who are there. And um, from here in Washington, D.C. at the National Geographic and through our project, National Geographic Pristine Seas, we are going to continue working for the rest of the decade to work with communities, indigenous peoples, and governments to help protect 30% of the ocean by 2030. Thank you.